welcome to Tree of Life. We're going to be to join us online. We just invite you to enter in with us this morning. And the King of Glory is with you right there. He's with us here this morning. If you'll stand up and join us. Father, we thank you for this day. We come and we give you all the praise. We thank you for breath. We thank you for life and health. Lord, we give you all the glory. You alone are worthy of our praise. And we welcome you here this morning. Blessed be your name.
that we can come into your presence. And Lord, where your presence is, there is freedom and liberty and holy ground and all the blessings of the Lord, Father, as we come together today and we worship and honor you, Lord. We lift up your name, the name that is above every other name. Father, your name that one day where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Lord, that you are God and that you are King. And we thank you for that today, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one who goes before us and makes crooked paths straight. We thank you, God, that we can trust in you, that you are the one, Lord, that works and moves and has its being, Father, on our behalf, because you are a great and a mighty God. And we love you today and we worship you. Father, we thank you that as we come into this place and honor you that, Holy Spirit, you have your way. You have your way amongst your people today. Father, you have your way in the hearts and lives. Father, the, those that are can hear your voice, Lord, that you will move on their behalf. And we thank you for that. So, Father, we stand in agreement today for those that, Father, are in need, Father, financially. Father, your word says that you will supply our every need according to your riches. We thank you for that today. Father, those that are needing healing in their bodies, Father, we thank you that it's by your stripes that we are healed. We thank you, Lord, that you are a covenant-keeping God, Father. Those that are brokenhearted or downcast, we thank you, Lord, that it's your joy that is our strength, that you heal the brokenhearted and you set the captives free. And we thank you for that today because, God, you're a God that desires for us to walk in your wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. And we thank you and we bless you for that work in our hearts and our lives. You are welcome in this place. Do a work in our hearts. We love you today, Father. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He's a good God. He is faithful towards his people. And coming into the presence of God, into the house of the Lord, it's good because it's a place where you can just lay everything down and all those heavy burdens and change, they fall away. Amen. If he be lifted up, he will bring all men unto him. Amen. And where God arises, the enemy is scattered. And so lift up his name and honor him. And he will arise and he will fight on your behalf. Amen. Well, it's good to see you here today. Out of Matthew 6 this morning, I want to share a very quick and short scripture. But it's very impacting. In Matthew 6 verse 10, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. Who kn Everybody knows that, right? It's the Lord's prayer. Your kingdom come, that is a loaded prayer right there. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? Your kingdom come, God's kingdom come. Your will be done, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I wanted to remind you today that you are part of that kingdom. You are the kingdom of God here on this earth. And God has given you the authority to walk on this earth in his kingdom authority so that we can help bring thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? God's the one that orchestrates and moves and has his being on this earth, but very often he uses you to complete what he's begun because you're part of his kingdom. It would be strange having an army where there was nobody in the army but the one who was in charge. Would you have an army? No. So everything flows through the one who is the king and the head of the army and the kingdom, just like we are part of the kingdom of God, and we listen to him, and we follow him, and we do what he's called us to do on this earth. And you think, well, what is his kingdom here on this earth? What is his kingdom? Well, it's definitely what's not going on in this earth in the natural. Amen? There's two worlds here on this earth. One is the kingdom of gods and one is the kingdom of darkness. That's the bottom line. Amen? So what are you part of? The kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness? Well, I know that I'm part of the kingdom of God. And he has enabled us to help 
bring about what his desires are on this earth. He's given us dominion on this earth. We have dominion over the enemy. We have dominion over sickness, disease. We have dominion over things where the enemy comes and harasses us, over our minds, over fear. He is our deliverer and our forgiveness in this earth. And so we establish that kingdom here. He establishes hope. We are here to establish hope in this earth. And the God gives us hope for our future over sickness, over disease, over lack, because his kingdom is not of this world. And so I want to encourage you today, when you think about this prayer, that we, you can, they say this prayer everywhere, anywhere you go, if you go to funerals, if you go to weddings, if you go to any religious service, church service, they pray this prayer. And I don't think sometimes we realize the weight of this prayer that his kingdom comes, his will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And I know that God's desires for this earth is good in your life and for people around about us. Amen. He has given us that authority. He has given us that, those good gifts in our life and Holy Spirit to work in us and move in us and to establish the kingdom of God on this earth and in this place. So if you have something in your life today that you need, if you're lacking in finances, if you need healing, if you need an intervention of God supernaturally, guess what? That's part of his kingdom. And you have that authority and right to do that according to the will and the purposes of God. And I'm glad that I have that hope, aren't you? Aren't you glad that you have hope for the future because of him? You have hope for healing because of him. Your faith will motivate you to stand and believe because this kingdom of God is different than the kingdom of the world. And I I pray that each and every one of you are one of those that make the difference so that God can get all the glory and all the honor for who he is and for what he is. Amen? Amen. Well, you're very quiet out there. Are you still waking up because of time change? Yeah, I think there's still some people at home because of time change, right? But um, it's good to see each and every one of you, um, and I'm glad you're here with us. If you're a first-time guest, we welcome you. There's a piece of perforated paper. If you have a prayer request or your first-time guest, fill that in and then just place it in the offering bucket today as you leave, and we will make sure we get a hold of you and just welcome you through a letter. And thank you for being with us today. If you're online, You can go to our uh, webpage and there's a connect button that you can click and you can give us your info and your prayer requests, whatever you have need of, and we will get back with you. Amen. And uh, we thank you for joining us here in person today and online. And we are here to give God all the glory, amen, and all the honor for the great things he has done. All right. I have a few announcements that I would like to um, bring to your attention. One is that um, Easter is coming up pretty soon. April 4th, so make sure you plan on being here for Easter. We're going to do um, some specials and songs and celebrate that he is risen. And it's April the 4th. It's early this year. But come on down. Come on here if you can and, and join us on that. Also, on uh, March 28th this month, the nursery is going to be having a uh, meeting, nursery and spree- preschool volunteer. There's going to be a luncheon for you um, after service and um, some welcoming of new people. If you're interested in joining that team, it's a great team. I tell you what, the curriculum they have is amazing. And they don't just babysit our kids. They actually teach them and raise them in the Lord. So join in that if you would like to. We would love to have you in the nursery and preschool. There's going to be that on the 28th right after service. Wednesday night, this night is the continuation of the Elijah Bible study. It's good, guys. It is good. You want to see the hand of God move in people's lives and to be motivated? This will motivate you. Elijah's story will motivate you. And you're like, well, I'm not sure what it is. Go look it up. It is good. He walked out what God called him to do, and he brought down the fire of God and did amazing things. So it's Wednesday night. Come join us if you can. It's on Zoom. We send that out, the link, and meet us if you can. Um, Greeters ministry team is looking for a few more people to join in and help us greet here. If you're interested, see Joey or give her a call, and she would uh, connect you uh, with that ministry. Great ministry. Also, uh, if you have a new address or 
anything, anything updating on your data for mail outs or emails, this is where you need to put that. And if you wouldn't mind doing that, we would um, like to have that because we like to keep our database updated. So fill that out if you can, and we will make sure you get your updates, okay? And then last but not least, um, I wanted to mention giving this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Who can say throughout this time, this last year, that you've seen the faithfulness of God? Amen. He is faithful. He has supplied our needs. He has restored us. He has delivered us. He has kept us, and he is good. And um, he has been good when it comes to giving. Amen. And thank you for giving and being faithful. God will bless you, I know, abundantly. We were just talking about tithing the other day because Pastor mentioned it in his service. And um, I was chatting to my daughter, Kristen, and she was funny. She was talking about that. She's like, yeah, um, I listened to the service and, and heard what you said about tithing, just being a part of a Christian's life. She said, you know, I've been tithing since I was four years old, and God has been faithful. Amen? Amen. I was like, yes, we did something right. We raised our kids right. But you know what? Pastor and I have done that too. We have tithed and sin since we heard of it, and we've been giving offerings and God has never seen the righteous forsaken. He has never seen us forsaken. So thank you for your faithfulness in that area. If you want to give this morning, your envelopes are on your chairs, or you can just have a check. When you leave today, the ushers will be there to take your offering. And then also online, for those that are watching, you can go to our webpage again and click the giving button. Very easy to give. Uh, text or have an account that you can give on. But thank you so much, and we appreciate your faithfulness in giving um, today. Thank you very much, and bless you. All right, that's what I have for this morning. I'm going to let Pastor come up and share with you. And we're dismissing the youth right now to go on upstairs. And I know they're going to have a blast this morning, so bless you. have my mic on still. There we go. This is uh, the beginning of spring break, beginning of daylight savings time, major downfall, downpour of rain, and we appreciate all you faithful, hard and those believers out here. Come, come rain, shine, or time change. Amen. Hope it's been a good week for you guys. Hope you're seeing uh, good fruit taking place in your lives, your neighborhoods, your workplace as well. And um, it's getting like, like Cheryl was saying, it's a one-year anniversary of this whole COVID curse coming upon the world. There's no doubt it is a curse. It's from the pit of hell. And so we're still praying on a daily basis here. This whole virus has broken off our nation, off the world. And we're seeing people healed that get it or have had it. And so just keep on standing firm every single day. The best vaccine you can take is a, is a vaccine that says, I am uh, uh, covered by the shield of faith, and no fiery dart of Satan shall penetrate this shield in Jesus' name. And then do the, do the, uh, the common sense type things. Wash your hands, wear your mask perhaps, and do things that are going to be helpful in the natural realm. You do your part, God does his part. Amen. And so that's the way God works in his kingdom as well. Um, we're going to have uh, Jack sharing this morning here in a moment. I appreciate Jack. We'll talk about him a little bit more in a, in a moment. But before that, we do have some um, important birthdays happening this week that I know about. Uh, we have Audra, Alexi. Now, where's Audra sitting at? They're over here. Let's give her a hand. God bless Audra. Audra's a tremendous wife. Amen. Silence. <laughs> and, and, mother, and mother. So uh, most days. And uh, I'm sure she's a tremendous sister in God. She's a prayer warrior. She's been a great woman of God to help us out in our church in so many great ways. She's uh, always full of the joy of God, smiling and beaming with God's presence. And so we just appreciate your life and your heart. As I was praying about Audra this week, the Holy Spirit gave me 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. It says, For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened. And so the Holy Spirit's saying that you're a person that gives yourself to other people, ministering to them. And God's not going to cause you to be burdened and be worn out while folks around you are at ease by the work you do and to serve them. God's going to give you handfuls of blessings on purpose and cause you to have the ease also in your life. You're going to find some great blessings take place, I believe, by your servant's heart. Uh, in the Zenon family, like those folks are watching online today, are they here? Oh, there's the Zenons right here. you got a daughter named uh, Alyssa turning what age this week? Nine years old. So Alyssa is a precious nine-year-old. And uh, as I prayed about her, I, I received Job chapter 9, verse 27. It says, if I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad face, and I will wear a smile. 
And so I don't know all the implications of that at all, but I think what is being said to me is there'll be some things that like all nine-year-olds face at school or around peers or whatever else that could give them a sad face. But I believe that God's going to cause her to wear a smile and come out on the other side happier and more joyful than the sad face could be. Amen? So whatever it is she's going to face this year, God's going to be there to cause her to keep on wearing the smile she wears anyway and not have that sad face. Amen? Then we have a man named Dave Gibson. Is Dave here today? Sitting this right back here. God bless Dave. Dave's one of our folks. has been here longer than I have, longer than we have, and he helped to build this place. He helped to paint this place. He worked very hard in years past, and he's also a tremendous husband. I'm pausing. Amen. And a tremendous um, man of God, father, and a prayer warrior, and we appreciate his servant's heart as well. For Dave Gibson, I received Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. It says, who will transform our lowly body that it might be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And so God's just going to keep on, I think, giving your body strength. He's going to keep on causing your body to get conformed more and more into what is meant to be. And so just keep on rejoicing and thanking God every day. My body is stronger. My body is healed. And my body is being subdued by the kingdom of God on this earth. Amen. We're believing God for that also for you. Then also we have a lady here named Esther Smith. Is Esther here? She might be out today. She's watching online, I'm sure, as well. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, To everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So whatever season you're going through in life right now, Esther, uh, there's a reason, a purpose for that. The season will not last. It's going to be re replaced by a better season. And so just, re just rejoice in the season that you're in and know that God is for you, God is with you, and God's going to make sure he brings beauty out of any ashes you might be facing as well uh, in your life. Amen. So is anybody else having a birthday today or this week coming up? Would you kind of wave at me if I missed any birthday, folks? We're going to pray blessings upon all the birthday people. The anniversaries I know about today, our singers who are gone away on spring break, is Israel and Summer Ball. Not sure what number it is for those folks, but they're a great blessing here. Huh? Oh, number 22. So that's another blessing as well. Those guys will be back here, I believe, in a few days. But uh, we appreciate the Ball family. He's the guy that plays guitar back here. And then she sings as well, and they're, they're tremendous people of God. Then also we have the, uh, the Zenons have a double whammy this week. Milton and Angelique have an anniversary. I think it's on Tuesday. Is that right? And it's what number now for you guys? Seven, let's give them a hand for 17 years of tremendous godly blessings. Amen. We appreciate the, uh, the Zenon family here. This guy serves on our financial committee. And also the, the wife here is a tremendous woman of God, a tremendous woman of prayer. And she's such a godly example to her own children, to, her, to our church as well. We just appreciate how you've taken um, God's zeal and so forth in your own lives and has blessed people in our church already in so many ways of counsel and just your countenance and just the way that God's uh, anointed your lives to become more, more like he is. So God bless you folks. Did I miss any anniversary people? All right, let's all take time to just pray a, a blessing right now if we would upon all these birthday folks, these, these anniversary couples, as because God hears our prayer and God wants us to bless people. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, O oh God, for those that are having birthdays this week. We know, God, they're on the earth for such a, touch, such a time as this. And we declare that every plan that you have for them is going to be coming to pass in the next weeks and months ahead. We, we speak to them, O oh God, right now, protection, provision, favor. And we declare they have lasting fruit taking place in their lives and through their lives. We also pray, God, for um, ideas and creativity to come to them. We ask you, Lord God, to expand their influence and bring them, Father God, um, just handfuls of blessings on purpose. And also, Lord, we thank you, God, that they're going to be able to lead people to even to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in the year ahead. We bless these couples, O oh God. We say, be, O oh God, with the balls, be with the zenons. Help them, Father God, have a light that so shines before men. They're going to see their good works and glorify the Father in heaven in due time. We praise you for the godly example they have as, as a married couple. And may their marriages and their relationship, God, to each other grow stronger, deeper, more, bi more vibrant. And may no weapon, God, formed against them prosper. But may your will prosper. And we praise and thank you, God, for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. It's good to see Angel back here again from overseas. Angel and Damien were serving together in the same place. And they had a lot of very, very harrowing experiences. So I really encourage you guys. As our folks go out overseas, they're sometimes uh, having missiles over their heads. They're having bullets around them. They're having car crashes take place uh, by Humvees and whatever else. They're facing landmines. They're, they're driving by. 
So I pray every day uh, for folks that leave here and are, I know about, but also I pray every day for all of our troops that are in a place of danger. And I, I just pray to God that I say uh, no weapon formed against them prospers. And I say protect them, O oh God, every day from bombs, missiles, uh, bullets, sniper fire, aircraft crashes, or anything like this. And I just pray that God protects them, watches over them, and I believe God does that uh, by his spirit. Amen. So those guys are back here safe and sound and hope they have some good stories as well with that. All right, so now we're going to take, and um, I'm going to have Jack come in a moment. Jack is uh, going to be speaking this morning here, but he's also going to be talking about, I'm sure a little bit, about his mission. The Holy Spirit's calling him to our nation. And uh, I've heard prophets say that in time, as time goes by in America, there'll be a need for some missionaries to come to America and help the American people out. And unfortunately, it's happening more and more. So uh, the Holy Spirit told, has to spoken to Jack about going to the capitals of our country, for the next 12 months, he'll be in and out, in and out, back and forth, and he'll be starting out with, uh, he said, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in the mouth of the Mississippi River. He'll be going there starting Friday of this week, and he'll be praying around the capitals and praying around the cities. And so let's be those who uh, link arms with him in covenant and pray for our nation. Amen. Our nation needs prayer. We need to see our, our nation turn back to God in a vibrant way. We need to see revival come back to this country once again. We need to see godly leaders put back into our board of education, back into our schools, our universities, and our government as well. And so that all happens by God's Spirit moving in the way He wants to do that. So let's go ahead and let uh, welcome Jack as he comes and shares this morning. And uh, we just want to bless him, and you can just give us more of your story here today as well. Let's just welcome Jack. Hello. Can you hear me yet? Bless the Lord. It is a good day to be a child of God. I don't know how much I can walk around here. So um, I remember when I wasn't a child of God. I didn't have any hope. I was lost. I was depressed. I was about ready to give up on life. But there was something in me that said there's a God in heaven. And if there's a God in heaven that created everything, he must want to have fellowship with humans. So that was in me. And then I found this person called the Lord Jesus Christ when he walked in my room. And that's the hope that we have, eternal life in Christ Jesus, because he paid for our sins, and we can have eternal life in him. There's people out there that think they can't walk with God. That's a lie. It's a lie of the enemy. Marty, it's true that Satan is a liar. Is that right? He's a liar. He would try to tell you that you cannot walk with God. But I got good news for you today. You can walk with God if you want to. All you have to do is have the want to. Jesus has provided everything you need for life and godliness. No demon of hell can stop you from walking with God if you desire to walk with Him. No sin that you've committed, no past crimes, no matter what you've said, they cannot stop you from walking with God because of the blood of Jesus. He's paid the price so you could be righteous, so you could be holy, so you could come into His presence. Even though you fall short, even though you might get dirty again along the way and trip up and lose your way, Jesus' hand is reaching out to you and said, you can make it. I'm with you. I'm on your side. I paid the price. Nothing in all creation can stop you from walking with Him if you want to. That's it. If you have the want to, you can do it in the name of Jesus. That's the gospel that I preach. That's the gospel I believe. That's the gospel that he put in me. That all men can walk with God if they choose to. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We bow the knee in front of you and say, you are Lord, you are God. Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that you let the words that come out of my mouth be born from heaven, be clear. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would lead, lead me. I pray, Father, that our hearts would be open to receive what you want us to receive. And anything that's unclean, just cast it aside in Jesus' name. And you be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Our walk with God is very interesting. Because we start out as little bitty children in God's kingdom. That's why I love doing discipleship. Because people, 
really don't have a good grasp about what being a Christian is all about. It parallels the natural realm. You start out a little baby, you become a toddler, you become a, a, a preteen, you become a teenager, you become a young adult, and then hopefully you become a mature Christian. But that's all part of God's kingdom. That's the way it works. The knowledge that you walk in today is going to be totally different than the knowledge that you walk in 10 years from now. You're going to be a different person. You'll still be God's child. But God would have cleaned up a whole lot of the junk along the way. He would have taught you how to stand up. He would have knocked the crutches out from underneath your armpit so you could walk and be strong in God's kingdom. You wouldn't have to be spoon-fed all the time to enjoy the richnesses of God because He's matured you and brought you forth. That's His goal for you because He wants to display His glory in you. He wants to show you to the whole world and say, Look what I have done. Look at this child of God. Fine, young, mature man, woman of God that's showing forth my glory, who's chosen to leave a life of sin, who's chosen to declare the glory of him who's called me out of darkness. That's what he does in us. Once again, all we have to do is have the want to. The things that you, the mistakes you make along the way, they're really of no account. Because if you continue to say yes to him, as his Holy Spirit comes to you, if you continue to say yes to him, he continues to change you. He continue, continues to mold you into His glory in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to talk about a progression that I went through because there are some things that God will do for you. There are some things that I can do for you. I can fight for you. And there are some things you have to do for yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about. When I was a little boy, I moved to a new town. I was six years old, didn't have any friends. I met a little boy down the street, became good friends with him, and I was playing out in his front yard. But there's one thing I didn't like about this guy's house. He had a white chow, and it was the meanest-looking dog that I'd ever seen. Scared the heck out of me. So we're all outside playing one day, and this white chow, uh, they, they all decided to go in and get a drink of water. I wasn't thirsty, so I'm sitting down in the grass enjoying myself, waiting for my buddies to come out so we can play. Well, here comes this white child. Chow, I am petrified. I am scared to death. This dog's going to eat me alive, and I can't move. And I literally freeze like a statue. I mean, I don't move at all. And this white child walks around me two or three times, and then he lifts his leg, and he pees on me. That's what fear will do. Are you hearing me? I was so scared, I let a stinking dog pee on me. <laughs> 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When I was 13 years old, I moved to a new town. Always very hard for teenagers, preteens to move to a new town. I was a happy-go-lucky boy, beginning of the school year. All I wanted to do is make some friends because I didn't know anybody. It's a little redneck town, and all they wanted to do was fight. Every boy in school wanted to whoop my tail because I was the new boy in school. Somehow, I avoided it for two weeks. <laughs> so at the end of two weeks, I'm at the uh, skating rink, and I'm outside talking to a few guys. And this ninth grader bully comes up to me, and he, he picks a fight, and I don't want to fight him. I end up rolling in a ball down on the ground, and this is the cowboy days. So they had these metal-toed, steel-toed boots, metal-toed boots. Does anybody remember those? They had little metal caps on the end. And he just kicked me unmercifully in my back and on my arms, but I was rolled up in, boy, in a ball. I was too scared to move. I was petrified. That's what fear will do to you. Fear will cause you to roll up in a, bo a, a ball and let somebody just beat you unmercifully the good news is is the owner of the skating rink came out and broke it up second timothy 1 7 says for god has not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power love and a sound mind off to college as i got older i progressed i was an extreme introvert i don't know why i was an extreme introvert i wasn't when i was younger might have been the drugs and the alcohol i went through during that part of my life don't know I was very insecure. I did not want to draw attention to myself. Though being a high school dropout, 
I had ended up with a good job, and I managed to get my precious Beverly to marry me. I got two kids by this time, and I reasoned to myself, I'm not doing my family right. I'm an uneducated man. So I got my GED, and I went to college. Intelligent thing to do. So I go to college, and I roll in college, and one of the classes I sign up is for speech. Speech class. Wow. I had no idea how insecure I was. So my name is Adams. That's my last name. And quite often they go in alphabetical order. It's time to give a speech. Three-minute speech. That's all i got to do. Three-minute speech. Stand in front of my peers and speak for three minutes. My name is Adams, so I get picked first. So I go up in front of my peers, and I am scared to death. And I shake. I mean, literally. I'm not exaggerating, guys. I said three words in three minutes. The only saving grace was nobody laughed at me because they had to speak after I did. <laughs> so there was a little bit of safety there. But I want to tell you something. I was so distressed by my performance, I dropped out of college and quit college. That's what fear will do to you. Fear will cripple you where you can't even open your mouth, where you can't even get an education, it'll just stop you in your tracks. Hallelujah. I'm going to get my water. Excuse me for a moment. <clears throat> Second Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. Beverly and I bought an old country home and um, had my two kids and I decided I would insulate the attic. So I go up in the attic and I have an insulation machine and I'm up there and I'm blowing insulation, just, just laying a bed of insulation in there. I got my goggles on, I got a long sleeve shirt, shirt on, long pants on to keep the insulation off me because that fiberglass and stuff will really wreak havoc on your body. And I'm doing fine, but... Over there, about 20 feet in front of me, that two-by-six rafter looks like it's moving. I'm going, what in the world is that? And I got a drop light behind me, and so I turn off the machine. I get my drop light, and I put it over there and try to see better. And that, now the dust clears, and I go, oh, my gosh, that board is crawling. And then I realize it's red wasp. There's thousands upon thousands of them. And it was 70 degrees outside, but now it's about 110 degrees up in the attic because I've laid all this insulation, and they're starting to come off, and they're hitting me. Pew! They're hitting my shirt all over the place because they're coming to where the light is, and they're hitting me. And I tell you what, guys, I would not say it was fear. I was horrified. I was petrified. A chill ran up my back that scared me to death. So I turned and I hit the light and the light goes out and these bees are hitting, these wasps are hitting me. By the way, red wasps can kill you guys. They can do you dirty. But anyway, I managed to get out of that attic without even getting stung because I had long sleeve clothes on and things of that nature. So I was very, very grateful that I got out of the attic. Um, so I survived that. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So i got a question to you. Did God give us a spirit of fear? No, He did not. Where does that come from? Satan, or the pit of hell. What did He give us? Power, love, and a sound mind, some translations say self-discipline. So we're going to talk about those three elements that God has already given us. Power, love, and a sound mind. Let's look at power. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 8.11 says, But if the Spirit who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwells in you. That's the power of God that resides within you. He will quicken your mortal bodies. The power of God's salvation is dwelling in you. 
Back to my college story. I'm going to look back at that. I was such a great orator. <laughs> the spirit of fear that is not from God made me so scared I couldn't speak. I shook uncontrollably for three minutes before my peers, and it caused me to drop out of college. A couple years later, I fooled around and got baptized in the Holy Ghost. One day when I'm at church worshiping the Lord, fairly new Christian, maybe, maybe two years into it, I really don't, really don't remember. God comes along right beside me and says, I want you to preach. Well, obviously it was my great orator skills that he wanted me to preach. He knew, he remembered that little boy that shook, said three words in three minutes, said, I want you to preach. So me being a man of God, I went to my pastor very confidently, well, guess what? The Lord told me he wants me to preach. And some of you have met Pastor David Woodard. He says, what about next Sunday? <laughs> so I said, okay. So next Sunday, I crawled up in the pulpit, and I preached my first message. I was pretty scared, but the power of God was in me. I was pretty scared, so I faced that fear because the power of God was in me. And I want to tell you that it was absolutely awful. It was awful. It was, it was terrible. But it did not affect my psyche because I knew God had called me to do it. I preached Genesis to Revelations in five minutes flat. Blam! Boom! Here it is. Five minutes flat. And by the way, This is the same message I've been preaching my whole life. You are free to walk with God. Genesis and Revelation is five minute flat. I still preach the same message. It was horrible, but I was not afraid to get in that saddle again. I should have been shaking in my boots going, I never want to do this again. And quite frankly, for years, I was still terrified when I was sitting right there. And it's your turn to speak. But I knew that he'd called me to do it. So it really wasn't my choice. I just said, okay, you're the one who called the foolish people to go preach. You're the one who said the foolishness of God is the foolishness of men, of preaching, will bring people to the kingdom of God. That was his ball game, not mine, so I just crawled up and did it. I'm not quite as terrified of public speaking as I used to be, but I was for years and years, and I had to face that fear every time. But you see... You have to remember in James 4, 7, it says, humble yourselves, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It doesn't say, let the devil run wild in your life, and you will overcome. It says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil. That resisting was getting up out of my chair and coming up and getting here and believing somehow God was going to use me. And it happened every time. Happened every time. So you see, I learned to submit myself to God and resist, resist fear, and the power of God would come. Let's look at love, the second one of the three. Power, love, and a sound mind. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in Him should not perish for ever, have everlasting life. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. We don't have to have torment. Jesus defeated Satan. At Calvary, he made a public spectacle of Satan. We know that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We know that we have eternity in Christ Jesus. He can holler and scream all he wants. Fear does not have to have power and dominion over us because we belong to him. So back to my little redneck town when I was 13. The spirit of fear that is not from God made me so scared. That big ninth grader, I let him kick me with his metal-capped boots without defending myself. But something happened to me 
that day that was born of God. What happened to me was I didn't like bullies. And my love for people that were bullied went off the charts. I was not going to allow anybody like that to pick on anybody I knew. And I didn't even have to know them. I could see it happening down the street, and I was going to jump out of my car, and I was going to come after them. I didn't care if there was four or five of them. They were going to face me. You're not going to do this to that individual. And I did it many, many times. Because of that event, such love went in me for people that were bullied. I became known as a protector of those who were bullied. I did not matter. It did not matter how big or scary a guy was or how many there was. If I found out you were bullying someone, I was coming after you. That's just a fact. You can say, well, Jack, that means you were a mean person. Nope. I didn't pick fights, but I certainly would finish them. <laughs> if I saw somebody messing with somebody that didn't deserve it, that was lesser of a build or whatever, I was coming after them. But I want to tell you something. The same is true in the kingdom of God. And I'm the still same way today. I don't like bullies. Satan is a bully. He will bully you. He will try to scare you. He will try to get you to hide in a closet and not come out because he's a stinking bully. And we'll confront him and we'll make him move because he doesn't have power over you anymore. Jesus defeated him at the cross and you have the power of God dwelling within you to put him in his place. You see, I loved enough where fear was no longer an issue. There is no fear in love. Hallelujah. So that's the reason why you can walk with God. is because that bully has been put in his place. He might come to you and tell you all sorts of lies that you're never going to make it. You're never going to mount anything. This sin that I'm involved in will never end. It's a lie from the enemy. You can have life forevermore. Doesn't matter where you are. Because the bully is a liar, and Jesus has defeated him at the cross. And you can walk with God. Even if you didn't do successfully today, you can still walk with God. Because he's holding out his hand and saying, there's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's hope in the name of Jesus. I haven't left you. I haven't forgotten you. I'm here with you. We're going to look at sound mind and self-discipline. That's a little bit different scripture because sound mind and self-discipline really involves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is come, He comes and brings you information. And that information that He brings you is always reconciling you to God. That is what He does. Jesus made that perfectly clear in John 14, 26 and 27, and also John 16, 12, 13, 14, and 15. He made it very, very clear that's why the Holy Spirit came. Jesus came to reconcile man to God. Holy Spirit came to reconcile us to Jesus and to the Father. That's what He always does. He never, ever condemns you. And He will bring you scriptures you need to do battle with. That's why I said He's involved in this self-discipline. So when you're getting, and I'm going to be graphic for a minute, when you're getting beat to hell and back, the Holy Spirit will come and provide you a way of escape. He will come and bring you a scripture so you can do battle. So you can do battle against the enemy. But you still have a choice. Because you have to take that scripture and you have to choose to do battle. If you choose not to do battle you'll stay defeated. That doesn't mean Jesus has left you because he has not. It just means that you might have lost that particular battle because Jesus never leaves you, never forsakes you. Hallelujah. So 14.27 he says, this is Jesus speaking, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives you, do I give you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. And he goes on in 2 Timothy 1.14. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within you. Where does the Holy Spirit dwell? In you. Yes. Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. So 
Now we, all of a sudden we have a joint venture. The joint venture comes more into play as you start getting more mature in Christ. When you're a little baby in Christ, you have people all around you spoon feeding you and helping you walk with God but now he's talking about hey you're getting older now and I want to teach you how to do battle because you it's it's you, you have to get to the place where you can help others and now the Holy Spirit is dwelling with you in you and he's going to bring to remembrance the things you need to know so you can do battle and he goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 10, 14 and, uh, 4 and 5, 10, 4 and 5, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. The weapons we fight with are weapons not of this world. On the contrary, listen, they have divine power. They have divine power. So these unseen weapons that God has given us, if we will grab a hold of them, they have divine power to do what? To pull down strongholds. To demolish strongholds, to demolish arguments. What is an argument? Well, we're talking about fear. Oh, my gosh. I got red wasp in my attic. My little kiddos are going to get stung to death. I got to do something about it. I can't go up there. I can't go up there. Those things are going to kill me. But what about my children? I can't go up in that attic. But you have divine power to pull down strongholds. Now, I'm talking about red wasp. It can even be anything. Fear will paralyze you. But then the Holy Spirit comes and he gives you divine power. He gives you a scripture to bring that thought captive so you can do battle. And you can win that battle in Jesus' name. So back to the red wasp story. Well, it was an old farmhouse and it was in our home. I didn't have a landlord because I owned it. I didn't have the money to call an exterminator. Too broke. I don't know about, you know, early marriage, you don't have a lot of money. At least we didn't. Where it's true, the spirit of fear is not from the Lord. In this case, fleeing for my life was definitely a wise thing to do. So, you want to process the fear and see if it's relevant or not. So, I processed it. That did not change the fact that I own this home and my precious Beverly and my two beautiful children are my responsibility and these red demons needed to be eradicated for their safety. You didn't have the internet back in 1982. So I couldn't look it up on the internet to find out who to do battle. You, you guys that are going up today, y'all got it so easy. Boop, 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 boop. You can fix anything on the internet. We didn't have that. You had to figure it out on your own. <laughs> but one piece of knowledge I had acquired over the years was I knew that red wasps did not move good in the cool of the evening. They just, they like heat. When it gets 60 degrees or so, they quit moving or they're moving real slow. Just like that. So I had that piece of knowledge. So as the evening progressed to about 60 degrees, I took my thoughts captive and I faced my fears. I loaded up my cans, to, uh, four super cans of wasp spray. I waited until it got dark. I looked like a cowboy. I had wasp <laughs> cans. I had my mask on. I was all clothed up, and I was going up there to do battle. And I tell you what, I was prepared. With the knowledge and the weapons I possessed, there was no contest. I eradicated all those red demons, and I won that battle. But I'm telling you, Fear could have just as easily stopped me from ever going up there. And now, let me tell you how bad it could have gotten. They could have got my two innocent little children, had I not done something about it. They could have got my wife, because, I mean, there was thousands upon thousands of them. It was a two-by-six, which was about 20 feet long, the whole rafter, and they were covered with them. You could not see the wood, because there were so many red wasps underneath that tin roof. And I'm telling you, See, fear could have prevented me from protecting my family. And the same is true in the spiritual realm. I'm talking about red wasp. But fear can stop you from protecting your family. Fear can stop you from rising up to who you need to be in God's kingdom. So what is the point of all these stories? The point is fear will torment you. It will enslave you. 
Fear will prevent you from walking in God's love toward humanity. Fear will prevent you from excelling in God's kingdom. Fear will prevent you from fulfilling God's will in your life. So how do I go forward? First thing you do is you recognize, number one, you recognize where fear comes from. It's from the devil. The second thing you do is you realize what God has given you. He's given you a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. It doesn't say he's going to give it to you. He's already planted it within you when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's already planted within you. And then thirdly, remember that you always will have a way of escape provided for you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will bring God's precious word and you have a choice, option A, a way of escape, or option B, to stay in your fear. I, I highly recommend you choose option A, the way of escape. Finally, when you're faced with fear, don't let it consume you. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. For though we live in the flesh, we do not wage war as the world does according to the flesh. The weapons that we fight with, they're not weapons of this world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, to tear down arguments, every presumption that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ and will be ready to punish every act of disobedience as soon as the obedience is complete. So I want to talk for a second about Peter. Because a lot of us may not realize that Peter was really engulfed in fear. He had a lot of fear in his life. Though, you know, you read the Bible and it looks like, well, he's a real robust, strong man. And that's the, that's the, uh, that's the air that he put out. I won't deny you. They might. I won't. But quite frankly, he was battled up in fear. Now, what a, the, the, the main thing that I want to... Uh, I want to put in you is this is a process it's a process you're going to fail you're going to fall down you're going to get up God's going to strengthen you Jesus's hand is always there that's the thing he doesn't give up on you because you messed up once or you didn't win this victory it's a process and we're going to look at Peter's process Jesus called him to walk out on the water he walked out on the water what happened he saw the waves and he sank and who was there Jesus. Jesus was there and helped him out. See, Jesus won't leave you nor forsake you, no matter where you're at in your walk. Secondly, when Peter saw the man that he had put all his hope in being arrested, he rose up in fear and said, this is not going to happen. He pulled out a sword and cut off somebody's ear. And Jesus was there. He said, this is not how I do battle. Put your sword up. And then thirdly, though he said he wouldn't deny him, after Jesus was arrested, he feared for his own life, and he denied him three times. Jesus had already told him, this is going to happen to you. Peter said, no, it won't. Well, it did. He fled for his life, and he didn't think he could come back. But who was there? Jesus was there. Jesus was there. He's always, Jesus is always going to be there for you. That's the point that I want to get across. Whether you fail today or not, he's still going to be there. Because he says, though you are faithless, he remains faithful. That means when you fall, he's not going to quit on you because he remains faithful. And then fourthly, years later, after Peter was head of the church, an apostle of God doing mighty things in the kingdom of God, healing the sick, raising the dead, he draws back in fear again. The Jews come to town, and he's been eating with the Gentiles, so he draws away from the Gentiles because he's fearing the Jews. And, of course, the apostle Paul called him out. Called him out. The point is, we're always going to have fear attack us. It is something that's just always going to be there. But we have to learn to stand up and do battle against it and bring it under... <clears throat> Under the Lord Jesus Christ. The end result 
is Peter was willing to die on the cross for his Savior without fear. Are you hearing me? God had walked with him. Jesus had been faithful through all of his failures. Jesus was always there. But he brought him to a place where he was not scared to die. Even he didn't want to have the same honor that Jesus had. He chose to be hung upside down. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there was peace in his heart. At that point, he didn't have fear. He had finally conquered it. And so we're on a walk where we're going to have fear attack us. But we want to learn to do battle against that fear. And the reason why, please hear me. Please, please hear me. The reason why I talk about these things, because Matthew 24, 10, 13, I had this same conversation with my children not too long ago. says, they will deliver you over to be persecuted and killed, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will fall away. I don't want that to happen to anybody in this room. I don't want that to happen to anybody out there in internet land if you're hearing me. At that time, many will fall away and betray and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. So the point is, you cannot let anything have dominion over your life except the Lord Jesus. Anytime you see that thing rise up and try to take dominion over your life, you have to bring it to the cross. You have to bring it under the feet of the Lord Jesus because it will control you to such a degree. If we get to this place in our lifetime, many people are going to turn away. They're going to turn away because they haven't learned how to fight in the spiritual realm. They haven't matured. They haven't got to a place where Peter is, where I will give you everything. Jeremiah 12, 5 puts it this way. You have raced with men on foot, and they have worn you out. How can you compete with horses? If you stumble in a safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? I've had the pleasure of preaching the gospel in many nations, thanks to Mike and Cheryl. I've been to a lot of places. You go to India, you go to Myanmar, you go to those kind of places, they train those precious Christians from birth that you're giving your life to Jesus. You may not live tomorrow. We don't do that in America. I'm sad that we don't do that. But I do believe we're at a place where we need to start teaching that. You may die tomorrow. That's not, you don't want to deny him because you might die tomorrow. So strengthen your faith. Believe that he's got you no matter what because we need to live for eternity. We're not promised tomorrow, but we are promised eternity, life with Him. And this life is so short, and then it's over. So we need to be prepared to testify of His goodness in all situations. If the police come knocking on our door and say, are you going to deny Him, or we're going to kill you? Jesus wants you to a place where you go, I will not deny Him. Pastor preached last Sunday. I think it was what, Revelations 12.8 or 8.12, 12.8. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the word of His testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. That's where we want to get. So when we get to that place, we don't care what you do to my body. I'm not going to deny Him. I'm not going to stop preaching the name of Jesus. I'm not going to be scared of that person because he laughed at me. I'm not going to be scared of my boss because he's threatening to fire me because I said the name of Jesus. We have to be bold. The righteous are bold as the lion in the name of Jesus. If you can't handle fear when it's still easy to walk with God, how are you going to respond when all hell breaks loose? And most importantly, if you don't get a handle on it, fear will cause you to deny your faith in Jesus. May we be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew to whom they belonged. I would rather die, let's see, excuse me. And they simply said, if God doesn't deliver me, we still will not bow down to your idols. And that's where we need to be. I still will not bow down to your idols. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. 
I don't care what you do to me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I will not bow down to your idols. About once a year, God gives me a new mantra, and he gave me one recently. And the, 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 the newest one he gave me is this. I would rather die in faith than live in fear. It's a good one. Now listen, guys. I don't know if you know this or not. But it says 365 times in the Bible, fear not. What does that tell us? That means fear is going to come upon us. It's going to happen. 365 times he's letting us know it's going to happen. But he says, fear not. Just like Peter, when he began to sink in the water, Jesus, Jesus said, I'm paraphrasing, I got you, Peter. I'm still with you. I'm not going to let you go. When he was going to the cross, Jesus was saying, I got you, Peter. I'm still here. We can do this thing. <clears throat> and that is what he's telling you and me. I'm still here. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll be with you all my days. Put your faith in Jesus because he's got you. Put your faith in him because he's a loving God. Oh, by the way, God gave us dominion over all the animals. Though I was only a six-year little, six little boy, ain't no dog going to pee on me anymore. <laughs> so listen to me. There are some battles that God will fight for you. All of us know that because we've had him do that. But it is dangerous to believe that he's going to fight every battle for you. So if that's your thinking, you need to get it out of your head because... He's going to fight those battles for you when you're young or when he needs to fight them for you. But quite frankly, there's some battles that he will not fight for you. There's some battles that I can fight for you. You can come to me and I can fight tooth and toenail because I don't like that bully and I'll give it everything I got. But then there's some battles that I will just flat tell you, sorry, you've got to fight this battle yourself. And the battle, and this is one of those. Bringing fear under control in your life, that's a battle that only you can fight. You're the only person that can fight that fight. Just like Peter, remembering Jesus is right there with you all the time. He has given you all the tools you need to put fear in its place. A spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, and self-discipline. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I ask that you activate this word in us. We declare, I will not cower in fear anymore. I will take option A. I will calm myself with the comforting words that the Holy Spirit gives me. I will humble myself before you. I will submit myself to you. And I will resist the enemy. And I will and the enemy will flee. Sometimes resisting the enemy is taking up arms and doing battle in the name of Jesus. So I submit that message to you, and I ask wholeheartedly that you do warfare in the name of Jesus. I'm going to share with you guys for just a moment, if you'll look at me, about what God's called me to do. Most of you, many of you know what I'm called to do. God's been dealing with me about this since August the 1st, so it's been a long time coming. He's given me bits and pieces along the way of what he's called me to do. And I'm going to go to every capital in the United States of America, probably ending up at Washington, D.C. when it's all over. I don't pretend to know exactly what's going to happen because my battle is in the heavens. It's not against flesh and blood. I don't have to see things happen with my eyes to know that I have a victory. Are you hearing me? That's the most dangerous thing you can do as a Christian is depend on your eyes to think you're going to get a victory. It's all by faith. And we fight against principalities and powers of darkness that have access in heavenly realms. And guess what? You can't see them. But they're there. And he's given us the tools we need. So I'm going to head out March the 20th, and it's Saturday, just so you'll know. March the 20th is Saturday. My first thing theme is call sinners into a relationship with Jesus. I'm telling you these things if God gives you a heart to pray for me. 
My second thing is call the saints of God into a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. My third call is call the saints of God to come out of their hiding places and do spiritual warfare. Because many, many of our dear brothers and sisters are in hiding. They're hiding in their caves. They're scared because of what they've seen. And I'm not saying we don't use wisdom. That's not what I'm saying, so please hear me. We can be intelligent, as Pastor Mike talks about all the time, but we aren't supposed to cower in fear. We have a president of the United States that made a declaration not too long ago when he was running for office or even right after he got elected. He said, I will give this nation back its spine. I'm not talking about being a Republican or a Democrat. None of that means anything to me. I'm a Christian. But because of he's head of the land, he does prophesy things for us, even though he doesn't realize it. And when he said, I will give you back your spine, he was telling me and all of us that the righteous will be bold as a lion. That we'll come out of our hiding places. We will no longer cower in fear. We will do battle in the heavenlies and we will be victorious because the previous president said, I will make this nation great again. And he was also talking in the spiritual realm, though he did not know it. This nation was created by God to take the gospel across the face of the earth. We, please hear me, the Christians, we have allowed it to get in the mess it's in now. So we're kind of responsible. But he said, I'll make this nation great again. Meaning God's not finished with this nation. He's going to rise this nation out of the ashes. We're going to become powerful for the kingdom of God again. We're going to send missionaries to the end of the earth. And we will be a shining example of what it's like for a nation, one nation under God, in the name of Jesus. Number four. I'm going to bind spiritual strongholds in the capitals of the USA, and I'm going to cast them down. I'm going to loose the will of God that Pastor Cheryl was speaking of in these same areas, and I'm going to loose angelic host to do battle in the same areas in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Pastor Mike. All right, we're going to be uh, praying for Jack in a moment here. And uh, we also want to, want to receive, we could even uh, offering for him as he goes. Some of you folks may want to just kind of give and sow into what he's doing here ministry-wise um, on an ongoing basis. And so always, you can do that by just writing the word Jack on your, um, on your envelopes. And we'll make sure whatever you designate for $10, $15, $55 million, whatever you put on there, we're going to make sure it all goes to Jack Adams and to the ministry he's doing uh, these next 12 months. Like I said, he'll be in and out of here. We'll see him every couple of weeks in the church. Then he'll go back out again someplace else. So he's going to be uh, praying for protection, provision, and grace. Uh, Jack and I, <coughs> Cheryl, uh, we have a really kind of a, uh, kind of a common background as far as Austin goes. He both came to Austin from a different place uh, about the same month. I think it was 1993. We both ended up at Shoreline Christian Center, but there's what's then called Christian Faith Center. And uh, going to the same foundations class together. Didn't know him very well. He didn't know us very well. But we was kind of in the same path tracking there. And then we started pastoring here 18 years ago. And his son uh, came to services here for some reason. And his son liked the church. And his son got him to come here. And he always heard God's voice say, plug in this place, plant in this place, and be here. So he's been here now for the past 13, 14, 15 years. 17, 17 years then. He's been here for 17 years. Now he's got what's called the 17 year itch has hit him. And so uh, he's here now and he's going to be sent out by us. And like I said, we've traveled overseas in many countries and done missions work overseas. And I really sense as he was talking there, the Holy Spirit was telling me that the, the, ice, is, the ice is thawing. I got, a, uh, I got an email from Global Advance that I help out with. They're one of the largest leadership ministries in the, in a, in the world, based in Dallas, Rockwall, Texas, with David Shibley. And uh, they've told me they want to make me one of their. Um, mentor uh, leaders to help out church planters, people planting churches, and they got 11 countries that they actually are targeting, and they're asking me which country I want to take um, to take and just be able to pour into and help mentor pastors that are planting churches, and I'm excited about that. So 
I sense the ice is melting because I've, I've been held back myself for over a year now from traveling overseas. The Philippines was there last year in March, and that was it. That was our last trip to go on overseas. But I sense the ice is melting, and God's opening the world back up again, uh, opening our nation back up once again as well. Amen. So we're going to be praying for Jack as he goes. And let's um, go ahead. Let's all stand to our feet now. Have Jack come to the front here. We're going to reach our hands, our faith out towards him. Have Cheryl help me out here as well. We know that um, God's been ministering through Jack prophetically. Many folks here have been blessed by Jack's prophetic ministry. And so there'll be a lot of prophetic things take place that'll happen with him as he goes first to Baton Rouge. There'll be things that'll happen by divine coincidence, okay? So we're praying for that today. And uh, he'll start seeing things opening up to him as he kind of goes out in obedience. But God's not making clear every specific detail like this is very commonly the case, amen? So let's pray right now for Jack. Father, we thank and praise you, God, for this man of God who has been so faithful in this house and this, among this people, God. We know, Lord, that as he goes out, there'll be those of us that will miss him the weeks he's gone. But also, God, as he comes back, there shall be stories of victory. There shall be stories of salvation. There shall be stories of deliverance. And there shall, Father God, be breakthroughs take place before him. So we right now speak to him divine protection as he travels. Divine favor, God, for being in the right place at the right time to receive, God, even bigger breakthroughs than he could ask or think or imagine. We praise you, God, for churches, God, to stand with him as he goes from city to city, state to state. And Father, we praise you, God, for people that are lost to come to Christ. We thank you, Lord, that demonic strongholds shall be known to him, known by him. And he'll call him out by name, and he will help to be uh, do damage to the kingdom of darkness in many good ways. Also, we praise you, God, there will be a spark released among the body of Christ to get involved out of a hiding place into a place of spiritual warfare in these last days, Father, in Jesus' name. Help us, God, go from lambs to lions in this hour. Not be those who cower in fear at wolves around us, but those who, God, who take off the lamb's clothing, let the lion of Judah come out of us and attack those wolves and send them running in seven directions in Jesus' name. We give praise and thanks to God for his wife. Bless her, Lord, in his absence. These few days he's gone from time to time. And we praise you, God, that you go before him. And thank you, Lord, this church. We just covenant God right now to pray for him on a regular basis in Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for that. And keep on praying. I said for him on a, on a regular daily basis. We need that prayer. He needs prayer warriors with him. If you, if you take him, give an offering to him today. The ushers will have the extra bucket, please. Have those available like a guest speaker. And uh, you can put that in the bucket today. Make all your checks out today at a Tree of Life Church and, we, and make sure we'll, it'll go to the right bucket, the right place. Jack will receive that as well. Be generous with him, not just today, but in the future as well. Amen. If our prayer partners that are here would come to the front now, please. We have prayer partners here also to pray for you folks who may have a, a need in your life. Maybe you want God to touch your body and heal you. God is still healing bodies even today. And so please come to the front here receive prayer for healing. You can receive prayer for your, your marriages, relationships. You might want to pray for someone that's not here today that needs prayer. So please, again, come forth for prayer for them. Always fill those perforated uh, pieces of paper and your bulletins in for prayer requests. We take those and pray for those also. And if you guys can, start joining us. Be, be more serious about joining us before service, even at 9.30 or 9.40, upstairs in the upper room. We pray before service every Sunday morning. We're going to miss Jack in that prayer room on a lot of these Sundays. We need you to fill the gap. Amen. And so just try to choose to be here if you can, Sunday mornings, 9.30, 9.40, 9.45, uh, We start about 9.20, so keep on uh, joining us for that as well. And we're going to praise God for the prayer warriors we have. All right. Well, let's see. Who can I get here? To, um, let me get um, Sean Shelley again, if you don't mind. Take the microphone. You can pray for us a prayer of dismissal. And we'll believe God again that you guys have a great week here coming up. Praise God that you folks are going to be blessed to have God use you this week to be his hands, his feet, his mouth, his heart for a lost and dying world. And we just give thanks again for what Jack's doing. We'll be praying for him also. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day that you've created for us. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity to come together and hear this good word. We ask that you will unleash your blessings on this country and this world, Lord. We ask that you will um, make things fast to clear out the hold of the devil on this country and that you will 
bring this country back into alignment, Lord, and that we can all live for you through our churches, in our own cities, and spread out throughout the country, Lord. We ask that you will keep the word that we've heard today in our hearts and that you will bless us as we go throughout this week and live out this challenge that has been given to us. I believe that God has challenged us, Lord, to to take this back to our friends and our family and people in this community and to branch it out from here, from this state into the country and into the world. And we just thank you and praise you and lift you up as our Messiah, Lord, and our Savior. And we thank you and praise you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.